Eugene, you've just come back from Tahiti, uh, which was a, an eventful trip for you, a nostalgic trip, but a, a, an important one too as far as the MMA goes, because you were over there to talk to the government, I believe. Yeah, so I was just uh, basically part of a lobbying group, I guess, that we're talking to the government uh, and you know to different government officials, uh, sports ministers, and well, these people, and basically lobbying to get MMA legalised in French Polynesia or Tahiti. Um, I don't think they needed my help too much. I think it's going to go through. I think, from what I could see, there's a lot of positive feedback. Like it, it's more than likely going to be legalised. I think they. I think what they just want it reinforced. They just want to make absolutely sure that this is what's going to happen. Um, the people involved over there. So I just went over there to, to just uh, educate them on some of the good virtues of the sport that I've experienced in New Zealand. And obviously, we have a little bit of a connection because we're a big Polynesian uh, country, and and Tahiti is a Polynesian country. So there was some uh, crossover there that they could use and they could relate to, so it was just good for me to give my uh, perspective of the sport from a more of the, particularly the professional side of the sport is what they wanted me to get across. Yeah, so uh, I felt I, uh, we did a good job at lobbying the government, the ministers, etc, etc. The sport is very popular because you were telling me about one of the fighters over there that's trained here, Henry Burns, and um, uh, he's treated a bit like a celebrity over there. Could you tell tell the viewers about arriving at the at the, uh, at the customs? Yeah, so Henry Henry Burns is uh, you know like he's a guy that comes and trains here regularly for the last five or so years. And he's only had a handful of fights, like he's relatively inexperienced compared to us Kiwis over here. Uh, very talented fighter, like if he could be here full time, he could easily be, you know, like one of the top guys in this part of the world, you know, in his weight division. Um, but obviously he has a lot of stuff he has to do in Tahiti. But um, yeah, we, he's, a, he's a quiet, unassuming guy here, but we have no idea until you go to Tahiti, uh, you know, he's quite... Uh, well-known sportsman over there. He's quite a famous uh, guy. He's like, uh, I jokingly, you know, called him the McGregor of Tahiti. Uh, like uh, the first example I got when we got there was like we didn't have our final destination to write down on our immigration forms uh, the name of the hotel, and they weren't cooperating with us to find it. Then another lady came over and she was like, like who, who are you here with? And then as soon as I said Henry Burns, they led us straight through immigration. Bypassed all the security, all the checks, and then you know they all kind of jumped. They're like, oh, I'm Henry Burns. Yes, 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 MMA fighter. We went straight through and we had no checks or anything, and then we went straight through. And then obviously a lot of people recognize him on the street, and a lot, like he doesn't have to pay a lot of bills and like you know like if we go and eat then they insist on yeah it's just yeah it's it's cool it's good to see it's good to see that um they've got henry there and uh he's only had a few fights but compared to the rest of you know you know he's very experienced in tahiti and that the people hold fighters and martial artists in such high esteem you know like that's uh that's a p people very similar to us. Like they they love that culture, the culture, that martial arts culture, that culture of being a warrior. And then they see Henry Burns as like a modern day version of that. So they hold him in high esteem and they tr treat him respectfully. And, and he equally treats you know, all the people with just as much respect. So there's a real uh, eye opener for me just in regards to the culture of the sport in a small place like that. And the culture of the island was something that you enjoyed as well. Ah, it, was, uh, like, it was one of the best trips I've ever had. Yeah, I hung out with Henry and his group of friends and I hung out with the people. 
you know, I didn't stay in a resort in Bora Bora and hang out with all these pretentious tourists, you know, drinking cocktails and stuff. I got in amongst the people and I got to see the real, the real Tahiti, the real side of Tahiti, and I wasn't disappointed and I was glad I didn't have one of those tourist type of holidays. I'm glad I stayed with Henry and he looked after me and I got to see Tahiti beneath the surface. And it was a beautiful place, but it was capped off by beautiful people. The Tahitian, the French Polynesian people are, are just, yeah, beautiful, beautiful human beings. And there was the nostalgic part of the, the trip was going back to the place where you lost one of your students, one of your very dear friends. Yeah, so, yeah. Many years ago now, um, oh, man, I could get this wrong, but I think, I believe 2014, uh, I lost one of my students who I took over there for a competition, a boxing competition. He yeah, unfortunately passed away in the ring uh, there, um, yeah, with me by his side. And, um, And, and when this trip came up, the first thing I thought about was that. I knew I had to go there for some business, but in the back of my mind, I was like a little bit uh, weary of going back there. But I mulled over it in my mind and I thought, man, I, I think I need to, I think this is an important part. There was a yearning to go there that I felt like I felt I needed to go there. I felt like I couldn't give these guys an excuse. I thought they had a good cause, you know, like lobbying the government to legalise MMA. But I also knew that um, underneath all of that, I had a, I had another deeper reason to go there. And um, yeah, and and uh, I took uh, our our belt, Israel's belt, there. And I felt I needed to do that. I felt, you know, the, the, the story goes that, you know, like after that tragedy happened, I uh, did not really want to have anything to do with the sport. And the reason I thought that was just because if the sport is going to, you know, the, the sport's going to bring you this type of tragedy, then is it really worth it? Um, and I was thinking, no, it's not worth it. It's not worth. It's not worth all the effort we put into it. If this is the, if this is the potential end result. So I was uh, uh, adamant that I would leave the sport. And then uh, I, I had a conversation actually uh, with my trainer, uh, Lolo Hemoli, who's. Uh, very, you know, uh, philosophical man who, who thinks quite deeply about the sport, and you know, and uh, he changed my mind. And what he said really resonated with me. But he basically said, "Look, the, all the guys that you currently train are still going to have to fight, and compete, and train. They're just not going to have you by your side." they're going to have someone else. And he, he just said to me, he said, look, is, is there anyone other than yourself that you trust just as much as you to look after them and make sure that they're safe? And make sure they go into the ring and then return back to their family safely? And I thought about that for a second and then I, I immediately, I, in my head, I was like, you know what, there's no one else. I could trust just as much as myself to do just as good a job as that, not a single person. And um, don't get me wrong, that's not saying that uh, I know that there's not other people that do a great job, but yeah, I just didn't think that there was anybody else that would put the amount of effort that I put into it. So, I, so my answer to his question was no, I, I, there's no one else I trust that would do just as good a job as me. So. Um, that completely changed my mind and I knew I had to keep uh, looking after those guys 
and and in the hindsight, after going to Tahiti the second time and taking that belt to that gym where we competed, I know that it, it reaffirmed with me that I made the right decision. And it reaffirmed with me that I think Law Man had something to do with that conversation that I had with Law. In some uh, weird spiritual way, I'm not a very spiritual person, I don't really you know, think like that, but I, I believe that um, when I was adamant and I'd leave the sport, I believed that when Lola had that conversation with me and changed my mind, I believed Warman had something to do with that in some small sort of way. And after going to Tahiti, I can see that, that I can see that I was not meant to leave the sport. And most importantly, I could see that that is the last thing that Warman would have wanted me to do. I'm here definitely wanted me to reach the place where I am now and I know that um, 100% and that, that trip just reaffirmed that for me and that's why I took the belt there because I believe that you know I, I believe that Will Man in some strange sort of way hadn't helped me stay in the sport then all of my our, you know all of my friends lives that I've had a little bit of an effect on would be different right now. And a little part of that belt is actually his, because we might not have it um, if it wasn't for him. So that's what that was about. It's just going back and uh, rediscovering that and figuring out after all these years what actually happened back then and why I stayed in the sport. So, uh, like I said, a little bit of a spiritual journey for me. <coughs> and if anybody that knows me, I'm definitely not that kind of person, but um, it's a special place and that's what happened, that's what happened over there for me. An emotional but very rewarding yes. visit. Yeah. Yes, yes, and I wasn't sure what I'd get out of it, but I got a lot out of it. Well, yeah, a great trip, one of the best trips of my life. Mo Hussein on the left of your screen fighting out of Jackal's gym. So good to see uh, Andrew Bantam up here. And his opponent tonight, Henry Burns. Seen Henry in the uh, MMA. And uh, for the big boys, the pace is a strong one as they come out swinging and Hussein trying to close that ring off. Burns using good footwork, right, using the, the whole of the ring. Uh, this, is, this is interesting. This is a bit of a chess match going on here. And Burns be no stranger to being on the canvas. Let's see if they can keep that pressure on right throughout the, the round. Both certainly backing their stamina at this stage of it. Hussein, well, they like to be in the pocket, the pair of them, that's for sure. You're close enough to give it, he said. Yep, I like that. And Burns putting a good little combination together. Oh, this is good. This is good stuff from the big boys. Great ring movement. Good footwork from Henry Burns. He, once again, he stays on the outside of his own. 
little bit of martial arts coming into play. That's where we'll leave the first. It was a good one. Mouth guard back in. Pat on the back from Andrew Bannum and back out to work goes Mo Hussein. And Henry Burns there to greet him. Yeah. This is really interesting, this one. I'm loving it. Great fight between the big boys. And Burns going downstairs. A lot of power in that low kick. <laughs> Off balance there. <yeah. laughs> Whoa. Well, the count goes on. He can't believe it. And Henry Burns went back to his own corner just to let him get up. Tony Angelo says, no, I'm going to do some counting. Oh, that was a nice right hand. If it went down there, it would be a legitimate one, that's for sure. Not saying that the first one wasn't. I'll have to have another look at it. The pace, well, he's got that timing right, has Henry Burns. He goes forward now, puts a little bit of pressure on. It was the other way around earlier on with Hussein asking the questions. But now Burns, he's got the counter-attacking skills just right. Hussein a little bit more careful of what he throws and when he throws it. Good one for this man. Seconds out cold and uh, the boys come out to the centre for the third and final round. And once again, that uh, continual movement from Henry Burns making himself a difficult target and once he uh, once he got that um, attack dialed in he's uh, proved to be a, a pretty potent force and Hussein might just be starting to feel the effects of that fast pace I think he's had to pick himself up off the canvas on a few occasions and that can be not only disheartening but tiring as well and Burns keeping on the outside nice timing on the uh, left hand as Hussein come in Hussein trying to make up the lost points. The guys have handled the uh, pace of the fight, and the, it's it's quite warm in here, not overly hot but still for this time of the year it's uh, it's pretty humid and th they've kept up this strong pace right throughout the th whole three rounds and uh, don't worry about the touch up guys we'll just go straight back to the corners I'm sure there'll be some sportsmanship at the end of uh, when the hands are raised
It was a good, uh, good display from him, a well put together one. Uh, had a game plan when they went out there, kept on moving and uh, yeah, excellent work.